Hey, I'm Ike, and this is Draw Process. We're on page 19 of First Sun and Sword today. I'm going to draw this page. Let's do it. Okay, here's the thumbnail. Last week, the weaver entered the room and uh, went to the table and told them to come put their blood in the bowls. And uh, so on this page, and, and you can read this in the webcomic or, or see the video for last week's page, um, this time, uh, Sword and Son, they, they share a look because they're hesitant about uh, putting their blood in the bowl, but then Sword goes forward with it, even though Son is very hesitant still. Um, so that's that's all that happens on this page. We have a, uh, them sharing a look with each other, and then uh, Sword questioning the Weaver to make sure he's on board with this. Then we have the establishing shot of the space and show uh, Son backing away from the table, very hesitant. And then we go back to uh, a closer shot of Sword and Son as uh, Sword cuts his hand and Son's reaction as he cuts his hand. Um, and even just as I said that, I feel like that um, introduces some things I could talk about. Um, I tend to try to uh, capture multiple things in a, in a panel. So you only get so much... Uh, so many panels, uh, you can't show everything. Uh, obviously, if you know if someone enters a room and they sit at the chair, let's say, uh, or here, uh, you know, sun backs away from the table and sword comes and sits at it. Like, how many panels do you use to show that? Uh, and it's one thing uh, if you do that, um, like an animation, and you literally just show it all. It's kind of you could show it all. You don't have to, obviously. But in comic books, uh, you don't have that kind of real estate, that, that, that many panels to show. Um, and because the panels are so limited, how many different things can you show at once? So uh, as a Sword is sitting down, Sun is backing away from the table um, to protest getting cut uh, to put his blood in the bowl. Uh, I put both of those things in the panel together. Um, and then like when, when, uh, sword cuts his hand and he's pouring the blood into the bowl, we see him doing that, but we also see son's reaction to what he's doing in the same panel. I could break it up into more panels, but, um, sometimes I do, but, uh, if you add more panels on the page and you break it up that way, um, well, they're going to, to fit them on one page, you're going to have much smaller panels for one. Um, and, and it definitely changes the storytelling style when you, uh, when the reader has to go from image to image to image to put together the collage, that's different than looking at one image that's showing multiple things happening. If, uh, it's fine. It's just different storytelling styles. Um, okay. Um, you'll notice as I'm penciling this, uh, I left it very, very rough and loose. I'm getting the basic box shape of the room um, and throwing in very loose figures into the space, the most important things. Right there, I drew a uh, sun in the background where he belongs, and you'll notice I drew another quick figure on the left. That was to... Um, that, that figure is not actually going to be in the final drawing. That was me double checking that how tall I made Sun in the background is accurate. That that if he were standing up at the table, that he's that size. I was double checking my scale by throwing in that figure up front. Finding my uh, vanishing point for the box, uh, which will give you the horizon line too, but it's finding that vanishing point there and then laying, uh, throwing in the room, all its pieces, the curtains and, and the rug. And now sun's closer to the table. So same thing there. It's like uh, in one panel, uh, sun is eight feet from the table at least. And then in this panel, he's just a few feet from it. Um, People, uh, people can track small changes. Um, you, you can move ahead in time to a degree in a panel, but if you move too much, they're going to lose track of what's happening. So um, 
he's still on the left of uh, sword. If if I had him from the background come and be on, and, and in the next panel he's not, he's goes from the left side of sword to the right side, he would have traveled the same distance technically. But it would be a little more confusing to the reader, or perhaps too confusing to a reader, um, because they can't track that movement in their mind. They, it just doesn't seem to follow naturally. So, uh, so keeping him on the left side, I'm able to have him move from further back in the room to up to the table, um, and and you're making all those little plans in your head. Like uh, each of them is almost like uh, its own pathway. Like okay, this character is going from here to here. They're, they're moving their body from this position to that position. They're doing this and then that. And, and you'll have several of those things happening from panel to panel to panel. Um, and then each of those has to track for the reader. Um, and, and, uh, another, you know, thing that can be helpful, I guess, with these, uh, doing these panels is when you show, um, when you want to show someone, I get, or not show someone do something, we'll say if you, uh, if you want someone to to move too far between panels, they're going to need to do too much uh, and that people can't track. Um, so uh, you can put a panel in between those two panels that's a different camera angle. So it's like, I mean, you, you could imagine like if some, if, if you want to show like a gruesome death off camera or something, you show like it's about to happen. And then you cut to the people's faces that are like flinching as it happens. And you have like the sound effect of it. And then it goes back, you know, to the, to the scene with just the dead body. Right. Um, that that's an example of it where you are, uh, skipping a step, um, like not showing the viewer what's, you know, the reader what's happening at that point by cutting to a different image and, uh, or letting the next panel be a different, a different camera, different angle. Um, and I use that all the time, uh, not to just show things off camera. I'm not, that was just an example, um, to, to help it flow how my characters are moving and what they're doing go from one one uh, shot to a different one and then back to the same shot basically letting the characters uh, get where I need them to go without having to show it hmm. my pencil is really short at this point it's about time to swap it out and uh, it had because of that I, I could tell my my pencils turned out different I was I'm holding the pencil more sideways and it's just looser um, and I, I didn't sharpen it as much it, it just ended up changing a little bit the the quality of the pencils um, but I kind of like it I kind of like how it feels uh, loose and, and rough We'll see it. Uh, I'm going to see how it feels when I switch to like a, a brand new pencil, how, how that will feel. Cause I just buy a whole pack of the same pencil. I use an H usually. So, uh, I don't, sometimes I will scribble in the, the word balloons some just so that I know where they could be positioned, that it works. But um, when you're drawing a, the, the panel on, on your page, you, you have to leave room for those word balloons. And uh, you have to have in mind that those word balloons are part of the final composition. So the background I'm drawing uh, above our characters, mostly to the right of Sword's Head in this panel here, there's going to be word balloons there. Um, and without the balloons being there... Um, the the composition might look a little bottom heavy there might be like extra headroom on the panel um it may not just look like the best composition but that's because you're imagining you know the the artist is imagining where that word balloon's going to go 
And once the balloon is there, uh, it will be balanced better. The composition will look more balanced. So, um, so, uh, this is several, several establishing shots I've done at this point that are basically always at this, uh, similar angle, um, where there's a vanishing point right in the center of the panel. It's a longer panel, typically. Um, we're not in this space for very long. Uh, I could see how that would get redundant if I kept doing the same angle. But uh, it uh, it's, it's partly because it's easier to draw if I keep it balanced, like with the vanishing point in the center. Uh, it just makes it kind of an easier angle to to draw and it and it definitely establishes the space because if i if i turn the camera in a different way you're not going to be able to see i mean the figures are facing each other you know on this axis if i if i turn the camera you won't see the characters as well perhaps um but i mean that's something to to think about is uh are you going to repeat these same uh angles, camera angles, and like, uh, shots, um, just be aware when you do, I guess, uh, this sort of layout, um, it makes things look pretty like this symmetry and this vanishing point right in the center, uh, the flat table there, the longer panel shape, these things make it feel, um, kind of, uh, static, still a little more still. Um, even like, you know, I don't have the curtains blowing in the wind by the windows or anything either. Like there's no movement, uh, in this, in this space. Um, and that's by design, uh, this, this home of the weaver is supposed to feel like this. Um, and, and this is more of a, a, a kind of stopping point in the story, like a low, uh, low energy level for the story before, um, before it picks up again with a lot of action. But just, you know, I'm, I'm commenting on that because um, these are all part of the choices that you make when you, when you draw your pages and you choose how to frame uh, your action, how to design your spaces uh, that your figures are in. This space feels uh, weighty and important and, and still uh, unchanging. Um, And that's, that's the vibe I wanted to give it. Um, but later when they're in a big fight, uh, that space is going to be designed specifically for that, um, feel and the camera angles and things are going to, are going to serve that purpose. Okay. So this table's on very short legs and they just sit on the floor at the table. Um, makes for kind of an awkward um, posing to try to, how, how would a character, you know, how would someone sit if they were going to sit at such a low um, table and are they going to be cross-legged or whatnot? Um, the way I've framed this action, I don't really have to show how he's doing it. I've hidden his legs. Is he going, going down to one knee with one knee up? Is he like immediately going down into a, into cross-legged or, uh, I've got his arm on the table, his left arm. There's not a lot of weight on it, but he's put his arm on the table to kind of lower himself. Um, so, uh, the idea was to capture there, um, not just that he had sat down because in the last panel he's standing. So I need to go from him standing to him looking like he has moved to the table. I can't just have him sitting at the table. Um, I could, but for me, um, that's not the way I like to do it. Uh, I don't want the reader to have to see him standing, uh, away from the table and then immediately sitting at the table. So I've got to draw him, uh, 
beginning to sit at the table in the process of sitting because then the reader can they can go from you know standing him to him moving towards the table and trying to sit it kind of helps them bridge the gap um but then as an artist you have to draw uh, a lot more like you you have to draw a lot more action your figures can't just always be standing um or doing simple actions like there's very very complicated movements you've got to capture in your figures um, to show those in-between movements they're doing, going from standing to sitting and so on. And there's ways you fake it. Like I was just saying, I, you know, I tried not to show too much of, I tried to imply how he might be sitting without really working out how he's doing it and without showing his legs. Uh, and then here with the, with Sun, I, I don't even show him sit. Um, I, it wasn't it it wasn't needed again for him to go. You know, from stand to to the situation that was in place for uh, for Sword, where I needed to have him go from standing to sitting, uh, doesn't occur for Sun because he's in the kind of the background of these shots, um, and it's kind of on a close up. So. Um, well, you'll see in a minute, but right now he's going to be on the left of sword and he's approaching the table. And then in the next shot, we see him in the background, uh, kind of a close up of him, uh, looking at sword's hand as the blood comes out. Um, but the camera's close enough that you can't tell if he's still standing at the table or if he has begun to sit or if he's just sitting. Um, and that's on purpose because now I don't have to show him sit down. Uh, I mean, well, it's, that's not the only reason I chose this camera angle, but it served multiple purposes. It does allow me to not show that. Um, but that wasn't, I mean, the purpose for it. It was, uh, that I liked this, this shot for, for what I was trying to show with the story. And, uh, and when I write these scenes, um, I don't have, I, my scripts do not explain the, the camera angles I'm going to use. Um, you know, panel one, this panel two, this, I don't like to do it that way. Um, but I do write, uh, with a sentence structure that isn't, is visual, uh, intentionally. So here it would say, uh, sword and son share a look or they look at each other, uh, hesitating you know about what she said and then and then i would say so and sword turns to weaver and says this and weaver says this um the the words are the the sentence structure is very visually oriented it's like i say who's i say what you see and what's being said um in the structure of the of, of the words of the sentences. So, um, so that's how I do my scripts cause they're only for myself also. So I'm not as worried about being misunderstood. I would do it differently if it was for someone else, uh, to a degree. But, uh, by doing it that way, when it comes time to, st uh, to thumbnail the page and work out those shots, I, I know what's gotta be shown in each, you know, action and page. Uh, or what I think uh, a page, how many how many actions I can get on a page, and where that page break will be, I'll have a good guess of it, um, and then and then I have to start actually framing uh, the action around, uh, framing the, the the camera panel, the angles, the panels around what is uh, um, what's what's needed for the story. And then interesting things, you know, develop that some of it's planned out. Like I knew we were going to see, uh, swords, sword cut his hand and, and son's reaction to it. That's, that's part of the script. I would know that's going to happen, but, um, but realizing, um, exactly how son's reacting to that and what it's going to mean for later in the story, um, to see son who is, who has already uh, easily, se seemingly easily killed a giant beetle. So, and clearly has great strength. 
so this boy that seems fearless and, and has so much fun and it just seems carefree. And then when he's faced with getting cut and blood, he's suddenly a child. Um, and later he's going to face bigger dangers again. <laughs> he's going to face real danger in this uh, episode, in this issue. Um, and we've gotten a glimpse of, of what this challenge is for him. The challenge for his character uh, in this story is being shown uh, right here. So I kind of knew that was the case uh, in the script, but once I actually draw it on the page as I'm, as I'm drawing it, as I'm figuring out what facial expression he's making as he's looking at these things, the character really comes to life for me more. And I start to realize how, you know, how important these things fit, these themes and how they fit together. They start to become more clear. And sometimes I come up with them through at this stage, the script sometimes is, is so rough that, or, you know, so unfinished that, uh, that it's only by drawing it like this that I'm starting to piece it all together and, and really know for sure what's important, you know, what the story is, what's important about it. And then I'll edit the script, uh, for the later pages. So, uh, yeah, trying to figure out like, uh, where, where's the floor, where's the wall behind sun at this particular camera angle. Uh, and I know where I've chosen to use blacks to indicate like a certain part of the floor that's black and the wall. It's not, it's, it's not just that it's in shadow, it's darker. It's not so much about the shadow. It's just that I chose to show the darkness of it through just straight black. Um, but, uh, yeah, finding like, okay, from this angle, what chunk of background will you see? And, uh, it, do I want to change that? Like, can, can I fake it a little bit? Can I, can I adjust it a bit to make it look better to not have tangents, like lines of walls and curtains that touch my figures at awkward places. Like right here, if that, the door above son's head actually touched his head, that would, that would look odd. So I've got to make sure it doesn't touch. So I might push it up a little higher, adjust my horizon line or the length of the floor or whatever you want to call it to, to just not have it at that particular angle, to not have it hit his head. Same with a sword there, the curtain in the background. I have it ending before his head because I don't want it hitting him on the edge of his head. Um, so I chose that angle so that, so that nothing would hit him there. And in the next panel, it's actually a little harder because uh, the the curtain's kind of hitting him in the nose, hitting him in, and, and hitting his face. There, I couldn't I couldn't find an angle that that I wanted to use that really um, didn't create slightly awkward uh, inter interactions or uh, intersections. So um, I just you know I did the best I could with it, allowing for some lack of clarity from it. And sometimes color can save you on some of that. Uh, but I'm using like a monochromatic colors, but um, but still there's there's lighter and darker ones. And so I can create some contrast between things uh, to make it clear that they're separate uh, through what color I choose in, in that phase. But I don't like to rely on that too much. I, I, I want it to be clear from my inks, from where I lay black down and lines. Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this inking the outlines of things, finding the outline. Where's the, the pencils are pretty rough. So I find what line do I really want to place? Um, I find that the more, 
gray, you know, more pencil lead that's on the page. Um, if Well, I don't know if I can put it that way. If there's too much pencil lead on the page, then um, I have a hard time choosing where to place my line because I'm not looking at like a blank page. I don't see the effect that my ink line's making very well because I still see all the, all that gray from the pencils. Um, so that, that's a challenge. Like one, some people will print out their pencils on a different sheet of paper, uh, or put a, like, uh, use a light box or something and, um, to, to, to lighten them up as much as they can. Um, not just so it scans in only showing inks and not letting the pencils show, but so that they don't see the pencils so much so that when they lay down their ink lines, they really see how the lines are looking without anything interfering with their view of that. Um, and so that for me, that's just, I'm not sure what I want to do about that. Um, I like, I like the softness of the lead that I use and, and kind of scribbling out gray areas to find sh uh, where I want to put shadows in darker areas. I like doing it that way. And it, uh, and if I go through an erase before I ink, then I might lose some of those, uh, some of those lines that, that I, that I placed. So, and I don't want to have to print it out and use more paper. So, um, it's something I'm still questioning. And now the inks. I think this is the Pentel pocket brush. It actually has actual uh, brush hairs and cartridges of uh, ink that you can swap out. I go through them pretty quickly because I use a lot of black. Now, uh, I think it. I like to just see how a page actually looks in with the blacks in, but technically, um, I could use a you know i could do that this part on the computer and it would be a lot faster um if i if i do a good job of closing in my my spots where the blacks need to go uh then i could paint bucket tool and just drop black in all those spots um but that doesn't leave room for adjustments and nuance i like to be able to see it on the page and then sometimes i'll go through with the white out and make little adjustments or i'll realize that i want to add a little more black here or there um so i i keep it in the traditional phase because i because it's not finished yet for me so you may notice here um uh, i drew this with a, a continuity error i've got sword cutting his right hand and then he's pouring the blood from his left hand well um that's because i on the last panel, I, I originally had him pouring blood from his right hand, but I realized it was going to look better, uh, and it was going to allow Sun to see it pouring out. You know, it was just it, I wanted to capture it from this angle instead. Uh, so I was like, "Well, I need to use the left hand." But then I didn't think to go back to the other panel and correct that composition, you know, or that that figure to to have him match. So um, continuity error. Uh, this time I didn't notice it until I was in the coloring phase. So, um, I just digitally cut out his hands and like flipped them horizontally, swapped them and, uh, cleaned up the lines digitally. I just, it looks good enough to me, uh, when I did that to just swap that. Um, cause I thought I, I saw it, I might as well fix it to me. Little errors like that aren't the end of the world. They're not that important to me. Um, but since I saw it, um, I might as well fix it. So you'll see that here in a second on the, uh, on the, uh, the final images, how I, how it looks swapped. Um, yeah, see uh, in that, th in that thumbnail originally it was his right hand and I used white out and switched it to his left in that final panel, but, but, but I didn't do that in the panel before that. Um, yeah, there it is. Uh, not, 
Not a hard fix, really, just a few minutes. It would have been more difficult if I went back and traditionally did it. Um, just like erased and, or, I mean, white out and on paper and just try to fix it. That'd be a whole different thing. But there it is. Uh, you know, I'm pretty happy with it. And it it furthers, uh, furthers the story. It gets me down the road to where I'm going. So there it is. Uh, thank you for watching. Uh, next week's the big uh, 2 0, page 20. And um, keep being the practice of your art and find others doing the same. <laughs>